Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with veteran jazz improviser and steel band composer Andy Norrell. He is included in the new Chuck Share book series by Share Music Company, Jazz Book Series Collection Number 2. Andy has been around for a while. He recorded his first album as a leader back in 1979, and he's made 16 albums as a leader over the past 39 ensuing years as he explores the possibilities of the steel pan and contemporary music. Over time, he's performed on movie scores by James Horner, Hans Zimmer, Thomas Newman, and on TV shows and commercials. In 2017, he was inducted into the Percussive Arts Society Hall of Fame. He's got a great story. Enjoy. Thanks for taking a minute out, man. I appreciate it. Sure, man. Chuck Shear reached out. There's a new songbook series, collection number two. You're involved with it. Talk to me a little bit about how you got involved and what it means for you. I've known Chuck as a bass player since before he started this whole series, and I, I love the books. You know, I have all the... I, you know, essentially, like bought all the all the fake books, uh, re- new real books, and all that stuff, and have been using them for years. And Mark Levine's books have, have had a huge impact on me and and tens of thousands of musicians all over the world. It's just really changed things, you know. And it's an, an amazing catalog. And I, so, you know, there have been Chuck from time to time has put out one of my tunes in one of the books, and we've stayed in touch and. Uh, I actually brought him a book uh, by, written by a friend of mine, Jean-Philippe Fanfan, about Af- Afro-Caribbean drumming uh, from a French-Caribbean point of view, and and uh, Chuck put it out. And so, you know, we've we've had stayed in touch over the years. And and when I saw the jazz songbooks that he was doing, uh, I just kind of touched base with him, and he he said he'd be into uh, putting out a book of uh, you know my tunes also. So I was just really happy to be in that you know in that catalog and and they have uh i mean a, a lot of my music i, I publish it for a steel band uh, i have another publisher that handles like scores and parts for all kind of steel band music orchestral music but you know reaching out with the with the you know the writing i've been doing all my life and stuff to re- be able to reach out to kind of the entire jazz audience so all the people that are uh, that are aware of chuck's catalog uh, which is totally amazing catalog when you look at all the books the, the things he has out you know so i'm just really happy to be part of it and also just happy to be in company of such good composers you know that it's such a nice series so uh you know it, it's been a little project to catch up on all those charts and <laughs> kind of put them out there in the middle of all the other projects i'm doing and stuff but i'm real happy to have that out so you've been at the percussion game for 39 plus years. How did all this begin for you? What were the beginnings and kind of where were you born and raised? How did it start? I grew up in New York City. And uh, the way I, I got into playing steel pants was through my father. My father was doing social work with street gangs on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. And he hit on steel band music as a community center activity for kids in gangs, teenage kids. And uh, he started one band with a, a guy from Antigua who made the pans and taught the group. And they, there was so much enthusiasm for it that they, they launched 20 steel bands in a year and a half on two sets of instruments in, uh, in two rooms. And he organized the first steel band festival in America and back in 1962. You know, and my, my brother and I started playing and then we got some friends together. We had a band. We grew up playing uh, steel band music uh, as a a vocation kind of and uh everybody else in the band moved on to other real jobs but my brother and i both stayed with the pan basically uh my kind of career has been spent you know uh composing music for steel for for pan in a jazz context and also in a steel band music context and playing with basically everybody i can play with you know um i, I play with uh artists recording artists from all over the world and it's toured with a lot of different people and performed with them and and worked uh, done a lot of studio work on on hundreds of albums and movie scores and commercials and so on try to you know the the steel pan has been my passport to a, a, a very interesting musical life <laughs> you know you've been around so many legends and luminaries and on so many soundtracks what have you learned from those kind of veteran, legendary, esteemed players that you in turn use to teach the younger musicians you get around? Basically, I, I, you know, I, I think everything, life, for me, uh, music education is something that started 
when I was a kid, and it has never stopped. You know, I people talk about, well, did you go to school? Yeah, I went to school. I got a degree and all that stuff. And I felt like I feel like that my real music education started when I got out of school. You know, and and, and it's it's an it's just ongoing, continuing education. And I just try to, I'm constantly uh, studying and practicing and looking at at videos of you know of people that teach. And you know, you just learn so much by playing with uh with other people and and with people who have more experience than you and different experience than you um i i, I saw a quote on facebook the other day i think it, it said something like you can you can read all the textbooks you can you can study all the theory but you have to you just have to play with people that are better than you <laughs> that's you know been my ongoing search is just to play with uh the best to, to try to play with the best people that I could play with, you know, people that I could learn from and people that have similar interests. And uh, uh, it's just ongoing, you know. And, and one of the things I learned on the soundtracks is just uh, really just kind of going down to L.A. and, and working on orchestral sessions was really an eye-opener for me because I, I was living up in the Bay Area where we would take uh, a few hours it would take a few hours to get a, a recording session set up for just a band, you know, and to go down to LA where it, it's just like, they call a 10 o'clock session and, and, and you, you better be there early <laughs> and be ready to play and hit the downbeat at 10 because it's going to happen, you know, and, and the, the technical level of, you know, in terms of everybody, the, the level of readiness of all the musicians, but also the engineers and the, the whole, uh, you know, I learned a tremendous amount about recording there and recording ensembles, working with the, the great soundtrack engineers and, and stuff, and how to mic my instruments and everything, and all, all those kinds of things. But, um, you know, it's just uh, to, to actually see a session go down with like 70 or 80 players of all different kinds of instruments and to see them... Uh, the the engineers be able to pull it together in a matter of minutes, and to know that all the musicians on the date are going to hit that first take, you 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 better be on on your game at the first take because it, it it that's the one that may go down because everybody else is ready to play, you know. And so that 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 was a real education, you know, working. I I wish they were I was still doing that kind of work, but uh, it's sort of like that's something that that kind of came and went you know the uh my the era and that period of my life where i was playing on orchestral dates in, in la I'm, I'm glad it happened but uh it's it, the whole business has changed and uh and my life has changed i'm not really i'm not located in california anymore talk to me a little bit about you know you've been at this for almost four decades now you've gone through countless journeys in music what has been the key to your longevity I, I think you know the, the, for whatever I don't I'm I'm not sure if, how to measure my longevity in terms which measure it is the, the longevity uh, that that really matters to me is that I'm staying alive and healthy and I keep getting better you know I feel like I I'm on a constant mission to get to get better as a musician as a pan player as a piano player as a composer as a, a teacher, all those things. And I just, I just keep trying to improve and learn. And that's what I, that's what I preach and teach when I, I go out. I, I, I spend a lot of time in universities these days teaching uh, percussion majors, field bands, uh, essentially, you know, young musicians. And, you know, that, that's my mantra, you know, it's like continuing education, just keep trying to get better. You know, that's what, you know, when you come back to, like, the subject of the, that brought us together here with the, with Chuck Shearer's series and stuff, that the music, I, I, I did reach back for some tunes from 30, 35 years ago even um, to, to put in that book, but a lot of it is, is my recent writing, and, and I just, you know, I, I just keep trying to develop and, and come up, go break new ground for myself, for the instrument, for the music be part of a conversation that's going on out there about music. I've also got a new project that I just put out, which uh, is, uh, I spent five years working on it. It's, uh, it's uh, a, a, a library of sampled steel bands. I, I've been doing albums for quite some time where I overdub a whole steel orchestra 
and I use a tw more than 20 of Elie Manette's best instrument. Elie Manette is like the father of steel pan, and he was the, he was the greatest tuner all, for 70 year, some years of his life. You know, so, and, and what I did was sample all those instruments and balance them and mix them in, in a way so that, like, to, to make them, like, totally accessible to musicians all over the world. And I've been, you know, that just came out. It's at ilio dot com. The uh, and I and I put out an album. It's called Like a Child, which is all music for samples, steel orchestras, composers that I love. Uh, I did this time. I, I I covered other people's music. I, I the music by Herbie Hancock and Vince Mendoza and Hermeto Pascual and Don Grolnick and John Coltrane and so on. Keep trying to work on new projects and, and everything. Everyone has a perception of you, your family, your friends, fans, students, but ultimately you live your life. What's, what's your perception of yourself? Who do you think you are? That's an interesting question. I, 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 never, I don't think of it so much that way. Um, you know, I, I think there's, there's another side to me uh, which, which, is the, which is not the, the music, um, um, which is that uh, I read a lot. And I, I try to be, you know, educate myself in, in a lot of different areas. One of them is uh, has a lot to do with uh, what's going on now. I, I, I've been really trying to educate myself about the history of America and the civil rights movement and, and the uh, what it's taken for for so many for everybody to to try to achieve the rights that we supposedly were given. In, in this country, you know, and how it concerns, you know, it, it concerns everybody. It's a worldwide phenomenon and everything. And and so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, that's kind of an active part of, of my life that keeps going. Um, uh, family is super important to me. I have two kids and then I'm, uh, my wife has uh, three kids from other marriages and, uh, and I'm really involved with my family. I have grandkids now too. I have a, uh, we have four grandkids between us, and uh, I'm starting to spend a lot of time with them. And it's a it's kind of a new phase in my life to to just start that again and, and be raising helping to raise babies, you know. <laughs> but from a from a new point of view, you know. And uh, having done it as a as a parent, and now I'm just getting to get to do it again as a grandparent. So and you know, and I stay active. Uh, really uh try to stay active physically i i'm i'm calling you right now we're actually talking i'm not sure if you realize where i am but i live half the year in, in a little village in the caribbean called labory it's in saint lucia and um just a few hundred yards away from the sea and we, we, we go swimming every day in the ocean and and uh i have a basketball court here for when the kids are over and <laughs> want to play ball and and uh that's always been a, a big part of my life, too. Wonderful. Can you let me know exactly where everybody can pick up not only the book, but your recordings, anything related to your artistic existence? Sure. I have a website, and there's, a, there's an online store there that has uh, like uh, all my recordings. And uh, the new album is, is free uh, streaming on SoundCloud. It's called Like a Child. And I have a lot of videos on YouTube. There are some links at my website. It's AndyNorell.com. And uh, there are also a lot of stuff on YouTube, uh, things I've done from everything from like playing with a quartet in a, in a club in Japan to uh, collaborations with the WDR big band and, and Relator, a great Calypsonian from Trinidad. We have a lot of stuff online. and. Uh, um, that's another area I'm real passionate about is, is calypso music, and uh, I've been able to work with some incredible artists like David Rutter and Relator, and uh, you know, and, and that's all out there, so it's, it's online. Wonderful, Andy. Thank you for taking a minute out to talk about your life and music, the new book, recordings. I appreciate it. Good luck with everything. Thanks. Thanks for having me on the show. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview. We give you a bit of insight into the finest minds in St. Lucia, Kansas City, and spots all over the globe, giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Andy for his time, music, and cool. 
you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe DiBino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. And for everything Joe DiBino, go to joedomino.com. And if you feel like it, you can donate to the Neon Jazz cause there. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.